Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create a cloud text effect in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions I need to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. And let's name this cloud uh, text oh, effect because that's what we're doing and our width is going to be 3840 pixels height of 2160 pixels resolution of 150 pixels per inch RGB color 8 bit uh, 8 bit and the background contents don't matter we're going to be changing that anyway uh, the color profile is my standard color profile of Adobe RGB 1998 square pixels is my pixel aspect ratio I'm hitting create and we are now ready to begin with our text now you can put this text effect on any text on any background but for the purposes of this tutorial I need a background to put this on so I'm just going to create a, uh, a simple sky gradient of dark blue to light blue in the background and that that will be enough to put our text on so let's start by going here to our foreground color and let's choose a nice darker blue for our sky gradient and let's choose uh, 057 AA6 a nice uh, deeper blue there let's hit OK and then let's click on our background color there and let's choose a nice color for that let's choose a 65 D3 uh, FB okay a nice lighter blue there hit OK and we are now ready to put our uh, gradient on our background so let's hit G on the keyboard or you can go to the gradient tool right here let's make sure that we are on our foreground to background gradient uh, and then let's make sure that it's linear our mode is normal opacity 100% reverse is unchecked dither and transparency are both checked then we're gonna go to the bottom of our our uh, image somewhere near the bottom not the very bottom but somewhere near the bottom click hold shift and drag up until you're close to the top let go and you now have a nice sky gradient to work on for our text okay that's really all that we need to do there the next thing that we want to do is get back to our default black and white color here so that we can put in our text so you want to hit D on the keyboard that's to bring up the default black and white or you can click on the little black and white icon over here uh, and then we want to hit X on the keyboard to swap the foreground and background or you can click on the little arrow here to uh, swap your foreground and back background to make white the foreground color because the text that we're going to write we want it to be cloud white so we're going to use white as our foreground color so now we need our text so let's hit T on the keyboard to bring up our text tool or click over here on the text tool itself now the font that I'm using is called McCloud or MC Cloud Black now I have a link in the description below where you can download this font uh, but feel free to use any font that you want for this cloud texture effect okay I am using this font at 215 points sharp centered and white color which is why we changed our foreground color to white okay uh, one other thing in your character palette and if you don't see your character palette you can go up to window and click on character right there and your character palette will show up and on the character palette right over here is the all caps button and if you want your cloud text to be all caps rather than holding down shift or hitting uh, caps lock on your keyboard you can click right here on all caps and then you can write and whatever you write will be capitalized okay uh, click anywhere on the document and let's write our text pixel magic is what I always use so that's what I will write and then what we want to do is fix the kerning or the spacing in between our letters to make sure that they are all uniform and pleasing to our eye now the way that we do that is we take our cursor and we put it in between our letters that we want to move either closer together or further apart once you have your cursor placed where you want hold down alt on the keyboard and then use your left and right arrow keys on the keyboard to move things closer together or further apart okay I'm gonna move stuff just a little bit closer together just to make it uh, a little bit more pleasing to my particular eye there's pixel uh, magic let's move you a little bit closer together there there 
That looks pretty good to me. And then hit the check mark when you are ready and your text is pretty much ready to go. Now I'm going to move this text towards the center of my document because that makes it easier for you guys. You don't have to though, if all of your text is actually in your document and ready to go. So I'm just going to hit V on the keyboard or hit my move tool up here. And I'm just going to click and drag until I get to the center of my document like so, uh, right about there. That looks good. All right, so now we're ready to apply our layer styles to our text. Now, once we apply the layer styles, we will have our cloud text ready, uh, which means that since it's all contained within a layer style, that our text is still fully editable. So you can highlight it, select it, you can then type in new text, and the effect will be instantly applied to that new text, which saves you a lot of time later on. So let's get to the actual effect now. So making sure that we are selecting our text layer, we're going to go down here to layer styles on the layers panel, and we're going to start with a bevel and emboss. Now I'll keep this up here so that you can easily see what we're doing. Style that we're using is inner bevel. Technique is smooth. Depth is going to be 100%. Direction is up. Size is going to be 35 pixels. Soften is 16 pixels. Shading. Make sure that you have use global light unchecked. Then you want to make our angle 125 degrees, our altitude 40 degrees, our gloss contour is linear, which is the default gloss contour, anti-alias is checked, highlight mode we're going to make multiply, and the color that we're using is B-A-E-C-F-F, -F, a nice light blue, and opacity is going to be 100%. Our shadow mode is also going to be multiply and the color is going to be a darker blue which is 0877A0 and the opacity is going to be 65%. Then we're going to add a contour to our bevel emboss so let's click on contour and the contour that we're looking for is going to be this guy right here which is called shallow slope valleys. Now if you don't see shallow slope valleys and you don't see all of these contours just click here on the sprocket scroll down until you see contours, click on that and it will say replace current contours with the contours from contours, hit OK and you will see all of these contours. So once you've selected our um, uh, shallow slope valleys, what you want to do is make sure it is anti-alias is unchecked, range is going to be 60%. Then we're going to add a cloud texture to our cloud text. So click on texture and the pattern that we're looking for is called clouds, which is right here. See, it's called clouds. And uh, the way that you can find that is you click on the little sprocket, go down until you see texture fill, click on texture fill, replace it, hit OK, and then you will see our cloud texture. Click on that, and then the scale that we want is 850%. Depth is going to be 75. Invert is unchecked. Link width layer is checked. And that gives us a nice cloudy look. But we're missing a little bit of texture to our clouds to make it look a little bit more cloud-like. And the way that we're going to get that is by going to Satin. Okay, so click on Satin, and our blend mode for Satin is going to be darker color. And the color is going to be this steel blue, which is 005C7F. Hit OK. Opacity is only 20%. Angle is going to be 90 degrees. Distance is 80. Size is 110. The contour that we're using is called Sawtooth 1, which is right here. Uh, and once you have that, you're going to make sure anti-alias is checked and invert is unchecked. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add two or three drop shadows to this text. The first drop shadow is going to give us a highlight on the upper left hand side of our clouds just to make it look like they're a little diffuse in the sun. The next one is going to give us a little bit of contour um, slope here on the bottom of our text to help it separate from the background. And the third drop shadow is an optional drop shadow. Now on something like this, on a background like this, where it's just a flat background, this uh, last drop shadow helps separate it from the background a little bit more. But if you've got a, uh, a specific background and you want this, say, in the sky, you probably don't want that last drop shadow because the sun... Uh, clouds don't have shadows directly behind them from the sun because the sun is far away and way above the clouds. So the shadow of the clouds is usually on the ground or whatever is beneath them. So you probably don't want this last drop shadow here. All right, so uh, you may want it, you may not. It's optional. But let's at least make our three drop shadows and then you can choose whether or not you want that last one. So you're going to click on drop shadow, then you're going to click on the little plus icon here to make two more.
All right, and once you have all three, the topmost drop shadow is going to be a blend mode of linear dodge add. The color that we're using is a very bright blue, which is B-E-E-D-F-F. -F. Hit OK. Opacity is 30%. Angle is going to be negative 55. Uh, our use global light, of course, is off. Distance is going to be 6. Spread is 0. Size is 15. Contour is linear, which is the default contour. Anti-alias is checked. Noise is 0. Layer knocks out drop shadow is checked. Our second drop shadow will give us the uh, slight separation on the bottom. And the second drop shadow here, whoops, let's turn that off. Our second drop shadow is going to be a blend mode of multiply. The color is all black, which is all zeros. Opacity is 35%. Angle is going to be 90, 90 degrees. Use global light is unchecked. Distance is 3. Spread is 0. Size is 5. Contour is going to be linear again. Anti-alias is unchecked. Noise is 0. Layer knocks out drop shadow is checked. Our last drop shadow is the optional drop shadow. I'll show you what it looks like. See, it's a very subtle shadow around the text. See, I turn it off, turn it on. It helps separate the text from the background. So the way that we do that is with a blend mode of multiply. Shadow is going to be all black color. Uh, opacity is only 10%. Angle, use global light is unchecked and it's 135 degrees. Distance is 61, spread is zero, size is 68. Contour is linear, anti-alias is checked, unchecked. Uh, noise is zero and layer knocks out drop shadow is checked. And that is all that we need. So hit OK and we now have our cloud text effect in Photoshop. Now this text is fully editable. See, can still highlight it, can still change it, uh, but that's that's because it's still just a layer style applied to our text layer. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman, signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.